So guys, so guys, so guys, so guys, so guys, in my most recent video, we just broke down DJ Wagner's season, talked about the ups, talked about the downs, talked about if he should come back to school, talked about he should declare for the NBA draft. If you haven't seen that video, I highly uh, suggest you check out that video. But in this specific video, we're going to be taking a look at Mr. Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard, um, he was the lowest rated freshman out of the five freshmen that they brought on. He finished his high school career as the 23rd ranked player. Um, according to ESPN. People actually thought that Reed Shepard was a five-star, but he actually finished as a four-star um, according to ESPN. Very, 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 very decorated high school athlete in the state of Kentucky. He was a McDonald's All-American. He won uh, Mr. Kentucky Basketball in 2003, finished his high school career with close to 4,000 points, which is absolutely incredible. He averaged a career high at 25 points, 7 points, 6.8 6 rebounds, and a crazy 4.4 steals a game as a, as a junior. And he also finished 2022 as Kentucky's Gatorade uh, Player of the Year. It's also very important to mention that Reed Shepard, out of all these guys, along with DJ Wagner, but mainly Reed Shepard, he was the one guy that really had actual family connections at Kentucky. His father and mother, they both played at Kentucky and are fairly great legends there um, as well. His father was actually the MVP of the 1998 Final Four. He also won two national titles um, as well. And Reed Shepard's father is actually the reason why he's wearing uh, number 15 um, as well. I'm pretty sure to most people, Reed Shepard going to Kentucky was not a surprise. Like I mentioned, he had the family ties. He's from the state of Kentucky. And going to Kentucky has always been uh, Reed Shepard's lifelong goal. Now, despite everything that I just said, despite all the family ties that he had, it's kind of crazy to me that Reed Shepard was still, out of all the freshmen that Kentucky bring, Reed Shepard was still the freshman that really was the most underspoke about. You know, people always talk about Rob Dillingham. Obviously, he has the flashiest game. You know, he has the social media uh, shiftiness and all that. Uh, DJ Wagner, he was a top guy in his class. Aaron Bradshaw, we know what he brings to the table. Same with Justin Edwards. But I feel like Reed Shepard, he was the guy that people really didn't have much expectations for him coming onto the season. I even remember before the season, people was even saying that he was going to be a four-year guy. He's too small to play in the NBA. He's not your traditional point guard. People didn't really know what Reed Shepard was going to really bring to the table. But fast forward to now, I feel like we can all agree, bro. This man, Reed Shepard, arguably had the best freshman season. Well, him and Robert Dillingham, in my opinion, very equal. But if you ask a lot of people, they would definitely say that Reed Shepard had the best freshman year um, at Kentucky. His accolades even speak for itself as well. He won the SEC freshman of the year over all of the talented freshmen in the conference. Just reading over his stats here, he averaged around 12.5 points a game, 4.1 rebounds, 4.5 assists, 53% shooting uh, from the field, and then crazy, crazy, crazy 52% from three, and, and also averaged 2.5 steals a game, which is also one of the highest um, in the entire nation as well. Like I mentioned, true definition of a team player. He really can do everything well on the floor. His highest game total that he had this season was 32 points a game versus Mississippi State. And he also hit the game winner in that game as well. But like I mentioned, to most people, had a very, very surprising season. As much as I was watching high school basketball, especially in the 23 class with all the star guys they had with the Bronies, Mikeys, um, Jeremy Keynes and all that. Reed Shepard, I would definitely, you know, hear about him every now and then, but I never just really scoped him and just watched every single game or really was checking up on him. Anytime I saw him on social media, I would check him out. Just from the games that I did watch, the main things that I did notice that did translate, you know, to how he was playing at uh, Kentucky was definitely his shooting ability. We obviously know what he can do uh, when it comes to that side of the floor. I think 52% on high efficiency definitely speaks for itself. He also has one of the best pull-up jumpers um, in the nation as well. Obviously, his catch and shoot ability is going to translate well to the to the NBA. And I'm going to be very honest, too. I feel like he honestly surprised me a lot when it comes to the way he would orchestrate Kentucky's offense. We know the amount of freshmen that they have and the star power that they have with Antonio Reeves, Trey Mitchell, and the guys. And Reed Shepard, I feel like he was a guy that was very calm. He never really forced the issue, at least on a consistent manner. Obviously, he had some plays that made you scratch your head at the end of the games on few occasions. But for the most part, I think Reed Shepard definitely did a great job um, at leading this unit uh, whenever he was the main primary ball handler uh, for Kentucky. You guys know how I feel about when it comes to shooting the ball. If you can shoot the ball, no matter the size, no matter who you are, you are, in my personal opinion, you definitely have a slighter chance 
over a lot of people when it comes to draft selection and just also just how you're going to be in the NBA. I definitely feel like the situation for Reed Shepard is definitely going to matter. I know right now a lot of people have him going somewhere in the lottery, top five. I've even seen people saying that he's going to go uh, number one. We'll probably talk about that a little bit more later, but the fact that he can shoot the ball, the fact that he has the IQ that he has, I do think he will translate well to the NBA, but like I said, it's really going to depend on the situation that he does go. I do think he needs to improve a little bit on his shot creation off the dribble. He doesn't really have the flashiest you know, type of dribbling package out there, which is obviously okay, but I feel like he's a guy that I just need to see with my own two eyes just how is he going to be a shot creator when it comes to you know, taking his man in one-on-one -on -one situations, pick a role in the NBA. I want to see how that's gonna look because you know he's not the most athletic player out there obviously we know so many guys in the league right now aren't the most athletic but they still figure it out but the fact that Reed Shepard isn't 6'6 he's not 6'5 even I see a lot of people comparing his game to Austin Reeves but people don't realize Austin Reeves is like 6'5 6'6 I've always been the guy to compare Reed Shepard's game to a Davion Mitchell that's just something I see especially on the defensive side of the floor and also he can take guys off the dribble every now and then um, but he's never really going to force the issue obviously we know what he can do from shooting the ball like I mentioned but Davion Mitchell to me is really the type of player comparison that I would compare Reed Shepard to of how he would be in the league Davion Mitchell I think he went to the right situation coming off the bench uh, for uh, after De'Aaron Fox Davion Mitchell is not that guy that is expected to be a starter on every single team he's just a guy to come out there make his threes, orchestrate an offense for a few plays while De'Aaron gets his rest, play great defense, hit big time shots when needed. And I think that's what Reed Shepard um, is going to be like in the NBA. Now, we obviously know what Reed Shepard did in his very last game at Kentucky. He finished with only three points, shot one for five from the field, 20%. One for three from three, four assists. I know a lot of people are actually questioning, does this last game really affect where Reed Shepard is going to be getting drafted in the NBA? Now, me personally, I don't think that one game determines. I understand the magnitude. I have to say this. I understand the magnitude of the game. I understand that it's March Madness. But I don't think one game should really determine or dictate where a guy like Reed Shepard should go. I mean, for the most part, you have to really take the overall sample size and if you just look at his numbers, you look at his consistency on a lot of parts of the floor when it comes to free throw shooting, his three point percentage, the way he can put the ball in the basket. He's even a fairly underrated rebounder as well. People don't really talk about that. I understand he had three points in his last game, but in my personal opinion, the game that I was watching versus Oakland, I don't really think he even had necessarily like a bad game. I just think he just wasn't really engaged. And I do think in that game, that game was specifically for the bigs to really take over. It's just Kentucky's bigs were just either not getting rebounds. They weren't finishing around the basket. They weren't getting offensive rebounds. They were missing a lot of easy you know, shots two feet from the basket. So I believe that's the main reason why Rob and, and Reed Shepard really wasn't like engaging themselves in the offense. Just because I believe Oakland was running like a 3-2 or 1-3-1, one, one, something like that. I have to go back and watch, but that game was specific for the bigs to really do their thing, and that's why Reed Shepard only talk, took one shot in that in the game in the first half and only finished with five attempts throughout the entire game, only making one three. So like I said, I don't think he necessarily had a bad game. He just wasn't really engaged, and I'm pretty sure if they were to play them again, this game would be a lot different, especially with how Reed and Rob would definitely approach this game. So like I said, I don't think people should use this last performance as to really dictate if he should, you know, now go in the second round or go undrafted or whatnot. At the end of the day, should Reed Shepard go to the NBA or should he go to college? Me personally, if you're a player and you're in discussions of going in the lottery, going top 10, top five, you really have to take advantage of that, especially with the type of season that Reed Shepard had. I really do think he maximized his potential as far as in season when it comes to Kentucky. Yes, he can obviously come back to Kentucky, be a legend like his father and mother, you know, have his jersey uh, hanged up out there in the Raptors. He can continue to be a great college player, and which I do think he will continue to do. But like I said, I don't think you can really pass up on opportunity if you're in lottery discussions as a player and just say, oh, I'd rather come to college to build a legacy there when you have the opportunity to go to the NBA. I will admit he is a player that I do need to just 
see to believe when it comes to how he's going to translate to the league. I want to see if he's really going to go to the right team. I want to see if he can score off the dribble when it comes to the league. And I want to just see how he really handles himself um, in that type of setting. I'm personally a believer. I think Reed Shepard has always been a guy that, you know, is undervalued. He's a guy where people don't really believe in him. They say he's too small, et cetera. And he continues to prove people wrong. High school scene, he did it. In the college, he did it. So, you know, who's to say he can't do it um, in the NBA? Overall, for the score about his season, I personally would give Reed Shepard an A. I think he had a great freshman season. Definitely deserves to be the SC freshman of the year. Definitely one of the best freshmen. Easily top two, top three freshmen overall uh, when it comes to college basketball. Um, so definitely an A grade. You watching this video, what do you guys think about Reed Shepard? Do you think that he should come back for a second season? Do you think that he should declare for the NBA draft? What are your honest thoughts about Reed Shepard? Let me know other players you guys want me to break down next, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.